Hello, everyone. Welcome back to JSA TV and JSA Podcast. We are here live from PTC 24 in very sunny and beautiful Honolulu, Hawaii. We are on the, the last official day of the conference, Wednesday here. How's, how's the conference been for you so far, Bill? Conference is amazing. This mm -hmm. is my second year here. Uh, and um, great, great content, great uh, partners that we're meeting and, and great meetings that we've had. So excellent. It's been excellent. Excellent. So we are here with Bill Thomas, Senior Vice President of Energy and Power Contracting for Clean Arc Data Centers. I'm going to chat a little bit um, for Bill's first time on JSA TV. So we're going to get a, l a little bit of insight from him about Clean Arc, um, why the company was founded actually last year at PTC, right? So it's uh, this is officially the one year mark um, okay. anniversary. Yeah. So and then uh, get into some 2024 um, trends ahead for Clean Arc as well. So we can just go ahead and dive in here, Bill. Um, um, so first of all, um, we would love for our audience to learn a little bit more, more about Clean Arc before we jump in too deeply. So you all are pretty new on the data center scene, like, like we were saying, you launched last year at PTC 23. Um, so can you just uh, tell us your elevator pitch around Clean Arc? Like how do you describe the company? Yeah, it might be, uh, might be a, an extended building that we're riding in, but let me try and give you the, the abbreviated version of it. Uh, Clean Arc was founded uh, as, as a really a a greenfield utility scale developer of data center. And when I say when I say utility scale, uh, our prototype for our buildings is 67.2 megawatts. Uh, so pretty significant, uh, a pretty significant dimension for uh, volumes. And um, we envision having you know four to six of these buildings per campus. Mm -hmm. And so when you kind of get into that and you think about what the energy consumption is associated with that, it's somewhere in the area of like four and a half terawatt hours annually. So mm. a massive, massive energy footprint. Um, our, our ambition is really uh, to develop for the hyperscale community. I mean, mm -hmm. that's that's where uh, that's where this scale is going. Um, we, we feel like we're meeting the hyperscalers where they are. They all have internal mandates to manage um, their GHG mitigation, mm -hmm. uh, greenhouse gas mitigation. And um, they have ambitions to uh, power their facilities by mm -hmm. uh, clean energy and you yeah. know carbon-free energy yeah. uh, in various time frames: 2030 for some, 2035 for others. Uh, and so we're trying to meet them uh, where they are, which is to say, we're bundling clean energy solutions mm -hmm. along with the digital infrastructure that we're bringing to them. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're, we're, we're excited to be able to present what we think is a really differentiated product in the space uh, where, where we actually use um, the clean energy solution set mm -hmm. to drive our siting. And so um, we're really excited about, uh, about what we're doing, where we're going. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the, the capacity piece mm -hmm. is critical for the hyperscalers, but the energy offset piece is, is becoming equally important. And so we're really trying to focus on that and trying to create uh, structures, uh, power, uh, power contracting structures that give them some benefits of clean energy procurement and allow mm -hmm. us to pass through some of the wholesale pricing benefits uh, to them. Excellent, excellent. So kind of in short, helping hyperscalers with their clean energy transition over time, right? That's right. Um, excellent. So filling, uh, filling an amazing uh, kind of gap there in the industry um, over the past year and um, you know, very exciting things ahead for you all um, as a new company in the space. So you talked a little bit about some of the challenges that you're, you're solving for hyperscalers. Um, is there anything else you want to add on that front? Yeah, well, I mean, I think, um, you know, our, 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 director of engineering says it the best, which is the data center of the future has not been built yet. Mm. And so we really focus on that and we really try and align our, our design and our execution with what the future is bringing. And one thing that we know uh, the future needs is scale. Mm. And so we're really focused on the scale piece. Um, as, as I mentioned, I mean, we're, we're talking about 67.2 megawatt buildings, uh, you know, maybe five to seven campuses nationwide. So we're really trying to get to the scale that um, the hyperscalers are, are looking for. Um, in addition, you know, we're trying to uh, accelerate our speed to market with those facilities. Hmm. A lot of problems, and I'm sure you've heard it all throughout the week uh, regarding power availability in, right. in all of the geographies across, mm -hmm. certainly across North America. And so we do a lot of analysis that, that uh, we think allows us to get to, um, to get to delivery as, as quickly as possible. And again, you know, I always use the analogy of the barbell. Uh, 
the physical power is one plate on one side of the bar mm -hmm. and the renewable energy offset is the other plate on the other side of the bar and they kind of have to be even or you get a weird workout yeah <laughs> and so um so th that's uh one other thing that we're seeing um meeting the hourly um carbon free energy uh, piece that the hyperscalers are kind of insisting on is another element that we're trying to bring. We do a lot of analysis that allows us to create portfolios of renewable energy projects that really get to very high levels of hourly renewable or clean energy uh, content for the hyperscalers and the operations right within the grids that they're operating. Got it. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, that's a, great, a really great overview of how you all are uh, helping hyperscalers out. And so we wanted to chat a little bit about a um, uh, project that you all have going on. So I'm looking down to make sure I get this right. So you launched an RFP for renewable energy products um, and you received a ton of proposals, more than 40 uh, companies. So can you tell sure. us a little bit about that and the excitement around it, clearly? Yeah, there's no question. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the 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 renewable energy developers, that's the world that I come from. I'm, I'm, I'm a recovering renewable energy <laughs> developer. Um, but, but they're always looking for viable channels uh, to, to sell their wares. And, you know, in, in my travels as a renewable energy developer and, and uh, energy contract originator, it was pretty apparent and quickly became obvious that the ICT space was procuring the, the, uh, 90% of what was being procured in the voluntary renewable energy markets. And mm. even more specifically, it was the hyperscalers that were doing it. Um, so we know that there's a nexus there between mm. what the renewable energy developers need to get their projects moving forward, get contracted and financed, and what the hyperscalers are really uh, demanding. And so, yeah. uh, our, as I said, our ambition is to go out and bundle this product and make sure that we have a viable energy solution, clean energy solution for the hyperscalers a priori. And to accomplish that, we ran an RFP this summer. Uh, we did. We received uh, three gigawatts of projects from over 40 developers uh, across uh, PJM and ERCOT. Mm. Um, we're still going through the evaluation. We, we ran into a little bit of a, a, a hurdle with, with PJM projects because mm. of some systemic things that are going on with grid reform in PJM that are not allowing renewable energy developers to really get their projects online as quickly as we would like. Yeah. But we're trying to get there and we, mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're, we're hopeful that things are starting to free up a little bit and we should have viable, um, viable projects to uh, serve our, our ambition of being online in 2027. Excellent. Excellent. You heard it here first. So that's, that's great um, progress on the, on the initiative that you all have laid out. So um, as, you, as you all continue to gain momentum then leading into your second year of being around in the market, what, what would you say about the horizon for 2024? What's ahead for Clean Arc? Well, we're really excited about 2024. Uh, we were hopeful that we would have an announcement that we could share mm -hmm. with you on live on YouTube TV. Uh, <laughs> sadly, we're not quite there yet, but we're really close and we expect uh, to make a, a pretty significant announcement uh, on our first facility uh, in, the, in the coming week or two or four. Uh, and we hope that we'll be uh, moving forward with uh, our first project in earnest. We, we've received some really encouraging news from the utility that we're working with Excellent. and we look forward to uh, really advancing that project and also advancing the rest of the portfolio. Excellent. Excellent. So definitely keep an eye on the space on, on, on clean arc, go, go to the clean arc website, check them out on LinkedIn. There's a lot of excitement coming in 2024. And, uh, thank you so much, Bill. For and if you're a renewable developer, feel free to <laughs> send me some of your project information. We're always looking. Yeah. Connect with Bill Thomas on LinkedIn, Please. connect, uh, with, uh, clean arc and follow them and make sure you watch that space. So thank you so much, Bill, for joining us on JSA TV today. Thanks, Candice. Thank you. And thank you viewers for hanging out with us here live from PTC 24. Happy networking.